All right, at this point, we're all getting very good at video analysis, but there's a couple of little tricks uh, with this Conservation of Energy Lab that I want to show you that we're going to need to take into account. So we're going to go Insert Movie, and I'm just going to show you using the Ball Drop event. So I'm going to open that video. Uh, the couple little things are, first of all, we do want to calibrate the scale in this video, and for that purpose, each of the videos contains this line that I've drawn on the background. That line is exactly 20 centimeters long. So we can start by calibrating our scale with this set scale button. Okay, so I'll click on one end, drag across to the other, and it will ask me how long is that, and I will say 0 0.2 meters, 20 centimeters. Okay, so now we aren't dealing in pixels, instead everything is going to be measured in meters. The other thing we have to do, and we haven't done this before, is since we're dealing with potential energy, Potential energy is always measured relative to some reference point. Now, by default, there is pixel values. There, there is an origin. There's a zero point on this video. And that zero point, I think, generally is the bottom left-hand corner. But we want to specifically set the zero point. And you should do this for each of the videos, because you'll be a different origin. You'll see there's a set origin button. We click that, and that, when I click on the screen, gives me the opportunity to set my zero point. What I'm going to do for this one is choose, and, and all we're doing this for is the potential energy, right? Because our height is measured relative to something, and there's a little platform here that it's going to land on. And so it doesn't matter where where I go left to right, but I want my up and down to be calibrated to that reference point. Now, in the other videos, uh, for example, with the pendulum swinging, you'd probably want your zero point to be the bottom of the pendulum swing. Um, but you just want to keep track of where that zero point is. Okay, so we've set the scale and we've set our origin. Now we can collect our data, so I'm going to click on adding these points. And I'm going to do this quickly because I want to show you how we're going to calculate the potential and kinetic energy from our data. So I'll try to do this kind of fast and sloppy. Okay, I'm going to trust you guys will be more careful in your data analysis. Okay, so there it is. Now I'm going to look at my data, and in particular here, I've got a graph. I want to open up my, my spreadsheet. Okay, so by default it's graphing the x and y, but what I want to produce is a graph that contains potential energy, kinetic energy, and total energy. So we need to add some new calculated columns. So let's do um, potential energy first. What I'm going to do is go data to new calculated column. And now I can define a new column here. It's going to be potential energy. I'll give it the short name PE and it has units of joules. And now the calculation for potential energy is mass times gravity times height. So the mass of the ball, in this case, is 50 grams. So I'm put that in kilograms, 0 0.05, that's m, times g, 9.8, times the height. And in this case, the height is just y. Right? So I'm going to go variables and click on y. All right, mgh. So then I'll hit done. Now, I made my new column. I'll calculate it right there. And I want to make this graph show me the potential energy versus time. So I click on the side here, and it gives me the options of what I want to graph. So I'm going to click potential energy. And we can see this makes some sense. It starts with all the potential energy, and then as it falls, it loses its potential energy. OK, so that's great. That's one of the graphs. The second graph I want to make is kinetic energy. So it'll be just a little trick here. So I'm, again, going to create a new column, data to new calculated column. This one is kinetic energy. So I'm going to call that Ke. Again, that has units of joules. Now, kinetic energy is 1 half times mass times velocity squared. So I'll type 1 over 2, 1 half times mass, 0 0.05. Now, here's the tricky part, velocity squared. The ball is moving entirely in the y direction in this case. So at first glance, you might say, well, all I have to do is take the y velocity, because that's the velocity that matters. Well, that's true, but in some of the other cases, the object is going to be moving in both the x and the y direction. So if you want the total velocity squared, we need to use the x and y component to find the total velocity. We're going to use the Pythagorean theorem to do that. right? So the total velocity squared equals the x velocity squared plus the y velocity squared. So to get my total velocity squared, all I'm going to need to put here in parentheses is the x velocity caret squared plus the y velocity 
caret squared and close the parentheses. Now this whole quantity in the parentheses represents the total velocity squared. All right, so I'm going to say done. And it got my new calculated column kinetic energy. So let's just see what the kinetic energy graph looks like. And here I start with zero kinetic energy. And by the end, I have a lot of kinetic energy. So that's good. Now, you can also graph more than one thing on one of these graphs. Like I want to graph potential and kinetic energy at the same time on the same graph. So you click on your y-axis here, and instead of just choosing one of them, click on the More button. And then you can turn on as many of these data uh, lines as you want. So I'm going to check the potential and the kinetic energy boxes and say OK. So this is kind of cool, because now I can see that my potential energy decreases, and at the same time my total, I'm sorry, my kinetic energy increases. So potential goes down, kinetic goes up. But we want to check... Uh, the conservation of energy. So we want to add these two things together. So we're actually going to create a third calculated column. New calculated column. This one's going to be total energy. And I'll represent that with, uh, let's see, TE. And again, that's in units of joules. And this one is just going to be the potential energy plus the kinetic energy. All right, so now I have my new column, and I'm going to show that as well. So I'm going to go back to more and I'm going to turn on total energy as well. All right, so this is cool. Right? And this is this is the graph I want you to make, all right, for each of these events. This graph contains total energy, potential energy, and kinetic energy. And what I would recommend is that you change these dots to make them look better. And if you double click on any one of these data points for total energy here, you can go to options and I want to make it to stand out more cuz the total energy is what I'm really interested in. So I'm going to make these plus signs and I'm going to make them huge. All right, and I'll say done. So there's my total energy. Now, if, if conservation of energy holds, we'd expect the total energy to be constant, even while the potential and kinetic energy is changing dramatically. You'll see that my, my total energy is not constant. All right, so this is the graph I'd like you to make. <clears throat> what you're going to do then is you'll take a screenshot of the graph and include that in your lab, and then you're going to analyze the graph to say, what does this tell us about the conservation of energy?